Car Bomb Episode 1. Here we go. Oh my god, I am shitting my pants. <laughs> Car Bomb is a band that has been requested in the comment section maybe five or six times a day. I haven't really known them at all at that point, but after digging a bit, I started to realize what I'm facing here. Luckily, an awesome mega epic viewer by the name of Andrew Gallagher, you are the man, thank you very much for all this, has reached out to me and we had a two hour long chat about this band. He also provided me with a list of targeted sections from songs that he thought I may be interested in featuring in the channel. So if you like Carbomb, you should thank him dearly. You can do it now, I'll wait. I'll obviously be revisiting this band in future episodes. So I decided to start with an easier track, whatever easier means. So without further ado, the opening track from the album widespreadly known as the Waveform album, The Sentinel. Short side note before we start, I'm in search of a social media person to help me out with the channel, but more about that later. We have a three minute song with 12 variations to go over. Let's do it. All right, first things first, let's look at the album name, shall we? It's made out of a W, that triangle thing, another W, triangle, triangle, W, triangle, W. This is a palindrome. And if you don't know what that is, a palindrome is a word, a phrase, or a number that reads the same forward and backwards. Just like my name. But that's a lie. That's if I was called Yugevga Baya Bagvegoi. Anyway, we have W triangle, W triangle, triangle W, triangle W. And this, as I'm sure many of you already know, is a graphic representation of the riffs in this song. But at this point, that's pretty much common knowledge, so I thought I'd get into the deep end of stuff and dig up some numbers. Numbers and numbers. So the way I'll present these different variations would be like this. The palindrome would be presented here, and I'll add in the relevant numbers for each riff. Here, I'll put the implied subdivision generated by the crash, or any other symbol, and the snare. Kick, bass, and guitar, by the way, always play everything, so don't worry about them. Vocals also do the same, for the most part, and I'll mention when they don't. Anyway, here I'll put down the perceived tempo, and here I'll play pitch, because it's cool, you'll see. Speaking of tempo, usually metal bands, and specifically metal bands in this genre, heavily lean on using metronomes and very calculated tempos. And what I mean by that is, if and when a metric modulation or some fancy rhythmic trick happens, that shift can be very precisely calculated, because more often than not, the new tempo would be a precise fraction of the old tempo. Now, these guys don't use a metronome, so the tempos that I'm gonna put down are gonna be a rough estimate. And anyway, the perceived direction of the pulse, so faster or slower, should be more of what you pay attention to. All right, finally, the first variation. The numbers here will be six and three. In the sixes, the first four notes are played, and in the threes, the first two notes are played. The crash and snare follow the same patterns where the crashes accent the beginning of each group, and the snare accents the three groups. So they kind of play in unison with the riff. We still don't have a steady pulse to latch onto, so I'll skip the tempo for now. And the pitch here is D. This is gonna go by pretty fast. I hope you're concentrated. 
Variation number two is rhythmically the same, but Crash and Snare are playing this backbeat groove, grouping the pattern into groups of nine. And because our subtotal here is 36 beats, we get four equally spaced hits that create a catchy 4-4 pulse that we can headbang to at approximately 92 beats per minute. The pitch is still D. Variation number three looks like this. The numbers here are six and four, where here the first five notes are played, and here the first three. The crash and snare are back playing in unison with the riff, but because of the new numbers, we do feel like we've slowed down a bit. And they complement that slowing down effect with going a whole step down from D to C. Oh, this is so good. Variation number four is again rhythmically identical, but the crash and snare play a different backbeat type of groove, this time grouping the subbeats into tens, or five in halftime. Our sum total here is 40, so again we get a nice implied 4-4 feel of approximately 74 beats per minute. And again, the pitch went down to B flat, or A sharp, which sounds more metal for some reason. In this riff, by the way, the vocals join the crash and snare on those downbeats. The next variation is the first time we kind of open up. The numbers here are not so obvious, as we only play the first note of each group, which means we can technically count other options as well, but the rhythmic inertia from before keeps us headbanging in the same pulse, so I'll assume the numbers stay the same. In this riff, the longer groups are played as open hits, and the shorter groups are played as muted chugs, and the drums follow the same aesthetic with crashes and toms. Perceived tempo stays the same, and we're still in B-flat. I think that's the shit, man. Variation number six is an extension of the previous one. So the longer groups are still that open hit, but the shorter groups, the four, are played as muted notes. The drums follow along with an added touch of the snare being played here only. It adds a cool halftime-y dimension thing to it, but it's not that dominant. Pitch-wise, it starts on B-flat, but it makes its way up towards the end of the part. Variation 7 has a small intro where that unison feel is back, but it's super short, so I'll skip it and go straight to the full version. The numbers here are 3 and 2, where here the first two notes are played, and here just the first one. Crash and Snare divide this pattern into groups of 4, and because this pattern sums up to 20, we get 5 equally spaced notes. But, of course, the snare is placed as a halftime backbeat pulse on beat 3, so we get an implied 4-4 feel over this 5-ish riff. And towards the end, the unison feel comes back in. The perceived tempo here is quite fast, at about 166 beats per minute, and the pitch went up to E. You 
usually around this point of the video, I start wondering, is anyone still watching? Variation number eight is the first one we change note rate in. It feels to me as if we're going from a 16th note feel to a 16th note triplet feel, I think. The numbers here are four and two. First two are played here and first one is played here to a total of 24. Crash, snare and kick are freaking everywhere, holy sh**, playing all the blast beats and all the mayhem available to them. Pure awesomeness. Oh, and the pitch is down a half step to E flat. I hope you're ready. It's getting heavier. In this variation, we're back to the threes and twos, like variation seven, and the crash and snare go back again playing a backbeat groove, but this time grouping the pattern into five or 10. This results in an implied tempo of approximately 65 beats per minute, and the pitch here is, um, it's uh, special. It comes straight from the ancient land of Watafakistan. I think the bass is D flat, but I also think the earth is a square at this point, no idea. This video is like three times longer than the song itself, what the hell. The numbers here are four and two. Like in variation 8, the unison feel is back, and here I'm convinced that I think the pitch might be D flat, maybe. Variation 11 is as groovy as it gets. The same numbers, so a total of 24. The crash and snare group this one into eight. So we have three main hits and we actually have a groove in three as well. And I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but I am. The implied tempo here is approximately 92 beats per minute and we're back down to C. Second to last variation here, all right, number 12. Stay with me here, we can do it, we can do it. We still have the same numbers, thank God. The crash and snare group the pattern into five or tens. So we have the five against four or five against two thing going on again, where the 24 beat pattern happens five times and the halftime beat adjusted to inflation happens six times. Oh, just trust me with the numbers. Apply tempo is 72 and the pitch is B. Last variation, uh, last variation is uh, just the same as the first one. Same rate, same numbers, unison, tempo and pitch. And that's it. So just restart the video if you're that curious. Oh yeah, and the song ends with a different riff. We have a new riff in 13-4. This is the sequence, so just do whatever you want with it. This song is a great example of the use of motivic development. I mean, there's practically nothing here besides variations on the same theme, which is very, very impressive. This band is super, super cool. From their aggressive style, super far out way of thinking and applying rhythms, all the way to the fact that they don't play with a click track. But moreover, they restore my faith in the human element in music creation that I feel is slowly getting lost. 
They sweat up hours in a rehearsal space and they don't rely on a computer like everyone else does these days. They squeeze the maximum potential from a human musician and I really appreciate that. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Or I assume just gentlemen, who am I kidding? Although if there are some women here, you are the real deal. This video is coming to an end. I had so much fun doing this one and man, if any of you know these musicians or have access to them, I'm very, very curious to see how much I got right and what I might have missed. So help me out spreading this video around in the hopes that one of the guys from Carbomb will see it and give me feedback. And finally, if you or anyone you know is interested in helping me out with the social media side of stuff, I really want to hear from you. I love creating these videos and man, I hate dealing with social media. And I feel this channel deserves way more than what I do with it. So if this sounds interesting to you, write me an email. The details are in the description. A huge thanks to my dear Patreon supporters, especially you, Mr. Andrew Gallagher. You guys really make this all possible. Happy Christmas if you just celebrated it. Happy New Year if you survived Christmas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the future.